May 1st. The WHO Emergencies Chief, Michael Ryan has stated that the coronavirus was of natural origin, disputing U.S. President Donald Trump's allegation that it had originated in a Chinese laboratory. May 2nd. The United States Food and Drug Administration has authorized the use of Gilead Sciences' antiviral drug, Remdesivir, for emergency use in hospitals. On the same day, Russia records a one-day record for the country with 9,623 new coronavirus infections. According to Moscow Mayor, 2% of the city's population has coronavirus. May 3rd. United States Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, has claimed that there is enormous evidence that COVID-19 originated in a laboratory in Wuhan. On the same day, the West and Central Africa region accounts for 54% of cases, and 35% of deaths in the Africa region, with cases in Guinea and Nigeria increasing most rapidly. The number of cases in the region could double each week if this trend continues, according to WHO. May 4. The Germany health minister has warned that it could take years to develop a vaccine for COVID-19, in response to remarks by President Trump that they could have a vaccine by late 2020. On the same day, the Associated Press has reported that the U.S. intelligence officials believe that China covered up the extent of the coronavirus outbreak in order to stock up on medical supplies needed to respond to it, citing a four-page Department of Homeland Security report dating back to May 1. May 5. U.S. President Donald Trump has announced that the U.S. government will release a report into the origins of the coronavirus in the near future without specifying a date. Later, White House Coronavirus Task Force advisor Dr. Anthony Fossey stated there was no scientific evidence that the coronavirus originated in a Chinese laboratory during an interview with National Geographic. May 6. French vaccine subsidiary, Sanofi Pasteur, has announced that it is planning to enroll thousands of people around the world, for an experimental vaccine that it is developing in partnership with the British company, GlaxoSmithKline. May 7. Japanese government approved Gilead Sciences drug, Remdesivir, as a treatment for COVID-19, making it Japan's first authorized drug for the disease. This makes Japan the second country to approve the drug after U.S. May 8. The United States blocks a vote in the United Nations Security Council, calling for a resolution for a global ceasefire, so that countries can more effectively fight COVID-19 in their countries over mention of the WHO. That same day, the European Commission also supported maintaining travel restrictions for another 30 days, in order to limit the spread of COVID-19. May 9. Only 34.5% of all confirmed global cases are reported to have recovered, but this is an incomplete number, because several countries does not report their recovered cases. Example, the UK, Netherlands, and Norway, etc. May 10. In the United States, several US officials including the director CDC, the director of the Food and Drug Administration, and the leader of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, have entered into self-isolation after coming in contact with an individual who tested positive for the coronavirus. On the same day, according the New York Times, Ethiopian troops may have shot down a plane on May 4, carrying humanitarian supplies to assist Somalia in its fight against the coronavirus. May 11. The Chinese government reports the first new cluster of cases in Wuhan, since the government lifted the lockdown measures in the city at the epicenter of the pandemic. May 12. In Russia, five patients in an intensive care unit at a St. Petersburg coronavirus hospital have died after a ventilator caught fire. The fire was quickly put out, and 150 people were evacuated from the hospital, but it is not clear how many people have been injured. May 13. Lesotho reports its first case. On the same day, the US FDA has awarded fast-track designation to Moderna mRNA vaccine candidate, mRNA-1273, developed to protect against COVID-19. This designation will expedite future reviews of the vaccine as it progresses into later state clinical trials. May 14. The number of deaths from COVID-19 surpasses 300,000 globally. 
The grim milestone means that the deaths of COVID-19 has now overtaken the 1812 Russian typhus outbreak, and the 1812-1819 Ottoman plague. May 15. The WHO publishes a scientific brief on multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children with COVID-19. This is a systemic disease involving persistent fever, inflammation, and organ dysfunction following exposure to SARS-CoV-2. May 16. In China. A database leaked from the National University of Defense Technology, in the city of Changsha, suggests the country could have 640,000 cases instead of 84,000. May 17. The growth of new coronavirus cases in Russia is stabilizing, as the daily tally fell under 10,000 for the third time this week. The country has the world's second highest number of infections. May 18. U.S. President, Donald Trump sends a letter to WHO warning, if the agency does not commit to major substantive improvements within the next 30 days, I will make my temporary freeze of the U.S. funding to the WHO permanent, and reconsider our membership in the organization. Trump also says he has been taking hydroxychloroquine for over a week, although the U.S. FDA cautions against its unproven use, warning of harmful side effects. May 19. The World Bank Group announces its emergency support has reached 100 low- and middle-income countries. This initial assistance, part of its pledge to make available $160 billion in grants and financial support over 15 months, this is the largest and fastest crisis response in the bank's history. May 20. U.S. President Donald Trump has once again hit out at China over the coronavirus, accusing the Asian nation of incompetence and perpetrating a mass worldwide killing on his Twitter. At the end of the day, Russia's coronavirus case count has moved past the 300,000 cases. May 21. The U.S. government has agreed to hand AstraZeneca company in England up to $1.2 billion to secure the supply of a potential coronavirus vaccine that could be ready as early as October. Under the deal, the government will bankroll a 30,000-person vaccine trial in the U.S. starting in the summer, plus the ramp-up of manufacturing capacity to make at least 300 million doses. The first doses will be ready in the fall should the vaccine prove effective. May 22. Research published in The Lancet did not find any benefit of the use of hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine in hospital outcomes of COVID-19 patients. In addition, the Harvard Medical School research found hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine, both alone or in combination with a macrolide antibiotic, was associated with an increased risk of in-hospital death with COVID-19. Both research goes against what President Trump believed about this medication. May 23rd. The director of the Chinese Virology Institute in Wuhan, now we have three live strains of bad coronavirus on site, but none matches the COVID-19 strain. She criticized the allegations by U.S. President Donald Trump that the virus could have leaked from the facility or peer fabrication. May 24th. According to Politico, a U.S.-based political news organization, Vietnam is the best COVID-19 fighter in the world. Vietnam and China have the terrestrial border stretches about 1,281 kilometers, but Vietnam is doing all of the right things very soon, quickly and clearly. Look at the statistics, Vietnam, Germany, and United States have the same time of this COVID-19 case, and same 16 cases in the middle of February. But at the end of May, Vietnam's down at 328 cases, Germany have more than 183,000 cases, and the U.S. top of the world. May 25. WHO puts a temporary pause on its trials of hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19, following an observational study of the drug and its effects on COVID-19 patients published in The Lancet. The study found that patients that took the drug had increased rates of death and heart arrhythmias. May 26. According to WHO, a final decision on whether hydroxychloroquine causes harm or benefit to COVID-19 patients is expected in mid-June, following a review of data from ongoing trials and already published evidence. May 27. 
Twitter has taken the unusual step of adding a fact-checking option to posts by Donald Trump, the first time the social media platform has used such a label for the president's tweets. The tweet now includes a link directing users to information debunking the president's false claims about mail-in voting fraud. May 28. Albert Burla, chief executive officer of Pfizer, says the distribution of vaccines could be challenging in Africa, because of a lack of widespread infrastructure to deliver them at a cold temperature. May 29. U.S. President, Donald Trump says during a press conference, the country is terminating its relationship with WHO, and redirecting those funds to other worldwide and deserving urgent global public health needs. He says the move comes because WHO failed to make requested reforms. May 30th. The vaccine, jointly developed by the Beijing Institute of Biological Products and China National Biotech Group, has completed Phase 2 testing, and may be ready for the market at the end of this year or early next year. May 31st. The European Union urged the United States to reconsider its decision to cut ties with the WHO over its handling of the coronavirus pandemic, 